wrote Carla from carlashower.com, and in this video we're going to be looking at the best markers and pens for rock painting. Paint markers and pens are an easy way to decorate rocks. I'll admit, I'm kind of a craft supply nerd, so I have tried a ton of them. I'm going to share my favorites with you, including the pros and cons of each type, so you can choose what best fits your needs. So, why would you want to use paint pens or markers instead of regular acrylic paints and brushes? Well, there are several advantages. Let's take a look at them. Paint markers come in brush and bullet tips, so you can get different effects depending on the look you want. Extra fine pen tips are great for tiny details and designs on small stones or pebbles. The tiny lines in this rock were drawn with a gel pen. Markers are also easier to use for lettering and writing on rocks, especially for beginners. The writing and arrow details in this rock were painted using a bullet-tipped acrylic marker. These are really user-friendly if you're not comfortable with regular brushes yet, and you don't have to wash them, which is always a bonus in my book. The final design in the rock you saw earlier was made using a combination of both markers and pens. You can see that there can be some fun detail created using both of them together. Plus, markers take up much less space to store versus lots of bottles of acrylic paint. And finally, my very favorite part is that they're really convenient and easy to transport, so you can take your crafting along with you. Just grab a few of your favorites and pop them in a cute little pouch along with a few small rocks. You'll have the perfect rock painting kit for when you're on the go. We're going to break these down into two separate categories, the markers and the pens. We're going to start with the paint markers, specifically the acrylic paint markers. These are the most common rock painting markers and the type most people think of first. It's easy to add dots, metallic accents, or glitter with them. There are plenty of brands and quality ranges available, but I'm going to work with one of my favorites for this video. This particular brand of paint marker is called Posca. They are one of the most popular paint markers for rock painting because they're one of the best. They're definitely worth the price, even if you have to build up your supply slowly. Start with a basic set and expand from there. Posca paint markers are perfect for drawing and dotting. You can get these tiny little details just as easily as you can color a larger area. They are permanent on rocks, and I especially like them for what I call naked rocks, or rocks like this one that I don't base coat. Posca paint markers are incredibly versatile. They come in glitter and metallics, as well as lots and lots of different colors, and they can actually replace many of the other supplies, especially if you're on the go. The most popular of these markers are the three sizes of bullet tip marker. This wide tip is just over two millimeters, the medium, which is actually the fine tip, is around one millimeter wide, and the extra fine tip is 0.7 millimeters wide. You can see here the dots that I created with each of the three sizes of bullet tip marker. I recommend starting with a fine point set to begin with, and perhaps an extra fine in black and white. I've linked my favorite sets in the description as well. These pit artist pens from Faber Castell aren't technically paint or markers, but they work similarly so I tend to classify them as markers anyway. These high-quality artist pens are filled with India ink, which is waterproof, fade-proof, and permanent. Great for rock decorating. There are over 50 colors of these pens as well, so you can accent and shadow as much as you like. The dark colors cover particularly well, while the lighter colors are more sheer and able to be layered over a white base coat for some fun and interesting effects. They come in both the small and the big chunky size. Both kinds of tips are solid enough that they won't buckle or smush against a hard rock surface. Plus, the brush tip is a great way to get a traditional brush feel without the extra hassle. I especially like the gold, silver, and copper metallic pens because they work well on dark rocks like this one. 
Pit pens are a bit pricier than some of the others, but they'll last a long time and can also be used for a variety of other mixed media projects. They're great all-around pens to keep in your craft stash for a variety of different purposes. I get a lot of questions on my craft site about using Sharpie markers to decorate rocks. Sharpies are kind of a special situation. They do have some benefits. They're easy to find in everyday stores, they're familiar, they come in lots of colors and sizes, and you probably already have some at home. Can you use them? Technically, yes, they work. Do I personally use them? Almost never. Without some extra steps, regular Sharpie markers will smear and ruin your artwork. To use them, first you'll need to apply a coat or two of sealer or acrylic paint before drawing so the ink doesn't seep and bleed into the porous rock. After you finish your design, you'll need to let the rock dry for several hours. Then, before you use a regular protective sealer, brush on a layer of regular white school glue, the kind you used in elementary school. You can see the difference between using the glue layer and the smearing that happens when you skip it. Honestly, I'm usually a little too impatient to fuss with this on a regular basis. However, if you're a Sharpie fan, their oil-based paint pens are a much better option. They don't bleed or change color when sealed like regular Sharpies do. They come in bullet tips, more than a dozen colors, and a large chisel tip that is great for base coating. They dry a bit glossy for a finish that is different than the rest of the rock painting markers. This bird rock was painted using oil-based Sharpies, and you can see the gloss from the markers. This rock hasn't been sealed at all. The biggest downside is that because these are oil-based paint markers, you can't use water-based accent pens and sealers with them. And cleanup is a little more difficult than water-based brands, as you can see by the paint still on my fingers a few hours later. Other pens you might find helpful are those for outlining and details. These non-paint pens are also useful additions to your rock painting kit, especially if you already have them from another project. We talked about the Pitt Artist Pen earlier in this video. These are the indie ink pens that act like paint markers. So if you started watching here in the pen section, make sure you go back to the markers and check these out. The Pigma Micron Pen is a felt tip pen with a teeny tiny tip. It comes in a few basic colors, but you'll mostly see the black color for rocks. This is actually one of the larger size tips that it comes in. You can buy these individually, or you can get them in a set with a bunch of different tip sizes together. The Pigma Micron is great for outlining designs that you've painted with regular paint and brush or paint pens, or directly drawing line art like I did here on this little flower pebble. You may already have gel pens in your craft stash, especially if you're already into coloring. You can actually use your gel pens on your rocks, either directly on the naked rock or over paint. They're great for small details and they come in a bunch of colors, including metallic and glitter. You'll definitely get better results from a good brand like Pentel, Signo, or Sakura than you will with the cheapy sets. This last pen is a special white gel pen called the Signo Uniball. You'll see it all over the place in painted rock designs. It has a tiny little roller ball, just like the other gel pens, it is one of the best pens for solid, opaque white details that you can overlay on top of your painted designs. In this pineapple rock, all these thin lines and tiny dot details were made with the Signo Uniball. One of the things I love about painting stones is that if I want to try a new product or technique, a rock isn't so precious that I feel like everything has to be perfect. If the Mona Lisa can be painted over a reused canvas, then I can definitely prime and paint over a rock. If you're just starting out, this is a great opportunity to play around. Start with a few pen types, see what you like using, and what works with your style. Then expand your collection with more of your own favorites. There are plenty of other ways to decorate stones, so be sure to check out more of my videos and see the possibilities. Make sure to hit the subscribe button too. Thanks for joining me!